Welcome to Liesl's Artistic Studio. I am so excited about today's tutorial because I was really pleased with how this gladiolus painting turned out. I absolutely can't wait to share with you how you can paint it too. And in my opinion, it's actually a lot easier than it looks, but that's our little secret. So to start off, an outline sketch is really helpful to get this painting off on the right foot. So here are some simple options to help you out with that. Last week I went over this outline step by step if you enjoy drawing it for yourself. Or I also have an outline available on my Etsy shop if you'd rather go that route. Which some people like simply because they can skip right to the fun of painting. Whichever way you choose to go, I'll have links for both of those options along with a list and links for all of the supplies you see me using today in the description of this video. All right, now speaking of supplies, let's go over what we need for today's painting. First, we need watercolor paper, watercolor paints, and we'll go over those colors in just a minute, a paper towel, some water, and of course, some brushes. Now, I've only got two brushes I'll be using today, a number eight Artegria round and a number one Princeton liner. Now, of course, you can use whatever brushes you have on hand or feel comfortable with. Now, we need to draw our outline onto our watercolor paper lightly with a pencil, whether that's by drawing it yourself with the tutorial or tracing it on using the Etsy template. Then we'll just tape the paper down with some artist tape and we are ready to start. Let's mix up some colors here on our tray that we will be using throughout this painting. Now, even though my reference picture of these gladiolas is actually a bright pink, one of the perks of painting and being an artist is that I can choose literally whatever colors I want. And I should point out, so can you. So even though I decided to paint this in a cool analogous color scheme that I will go more into a little bit later, you can do whatever colors strike your fancy. But for me, I've got some hookers green, some alizarin crimson, which is a cooler red or pink because it is made with some blue pigment mixed in. Some deoxazine purple, again with some obvious blue added. And then some pure blue itself, ultramarine blue, a blue that is not too bright, but also not too dull. So first, let's paint the gladiola stock that's off to the left side here, starting with some hooker's green for the top of the stock and some small unopened buds. Right now, I'm just painting this wet on dry, meaning I haven't watered the paper down at all yet. The paint is just being put right on here, helping keep it crisp and dark in value. Now that we've worked our way down the stock a bit, let's transition colors and add in some of the purple or pink or even a combo of both and blend that into the base of this green a little. Now that we're starting to get to the larger petals, we'll use the wet on wet technique and wet down the petal with water first and then start applying the paint. This flower stock, I plan to paint more of a pink color using the alizarin crimson as the base color and then either a mixture of the alizarin crimson and deoxazine purple or even just some pure deoxazine purple to create the accent and darker shadow areas of the petals. So after I've watered down the area, I'll take the alizarin crimson and start applying that color using just the tip of the brush in very small amounts, starting in the corners and edges of the petals, letting it spread into the water, sort of however it wants. We're gonna go with the flow today. I think the trick for these flowers today is to not overspread the paint. The entire petal doesn't need to be filled with color. In fact, I want some spaces to have little or even no color at all. I'm kind of just letting the water do the work and seeing where it pushes the paint and then I'll adjust from there. Then while the paint is still wet, you can add just a touch of the purple for an accent. Not too much. We don't want this to overpower the original color with maybe the exception for these very top spots where the buds are a little smaller and a little darker. I'm 
I'm going to paint in more of the green stock right here, but as you can see, I probably should have waited for these petals to dry first because the green is starting to bleed into my petals. So I'll just stop that from bleeding a little bit by dabbing the green with my paper towel, but you know what? It's not really a big deal. We're just gonna go with the flow today. In fact, it's kind of fun to have it blend in a little bit, but next time, if I don't want it to do that, I'll make sure the area is a little more dry before adding the paint. All right, let's continue working our way down. Now, once as I get to these open flowers, I'm going to try to have even more larger spaces of white on the petals. And I want a higher contrast in values to really set them off, make them noticeable, and create a focal point for the picture. I'll again use the water first, then I'll place in the pink, focusing it especially around the edges, and now the center vein lines going down the middle of the petal. And then I'll add a hint of the purple for the accent and the shadows. You'll notice that I'm going to skip around to different petals a little bit that are not right next to the one I just painted. This is gonna help prevent my petals from bleeding together. I'm going to let them dry, then I'll come back to the petals in between. I hope you're enjoying this instructional painting tutorial so far. Make sure you don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe so you don't miss out on more of my new and upcoming weekly tutorials. Now on this last petal, you'll notice that I focus more of the dark purple at the center area of the flower. This is going to create an illusion of depth. Let's 
let's finish off this first stalk of gladiolas by painting the stem. To try to keep my colors cohesive as well as make a nice dark shadow spot, after I've painted the water layer, I'll paint some purple right under the flower blossom at the top of the stem. Then I'll mix some nice dark green using Payne's Gray and Hooker's Green and apply that next to the purple while it's still wet so they blend together a little bit. Then I'll finish the stem off with some pure Hooker's Green. All right, let's paint this second stalk of gladiolas. This is going to be painted in the same way as the first. In fact, you can even use the exact same colors if you'd like. I'm choosing to change it up a little bit and make it more of a blue color though. Now you can go ahead and paint the tip of this a pure hookah's green, just like we did on the first gladiolas, but I'm going to try to change it up and try something a little different. I'll mix a little bit of this ultramarine blue with some hooker's green for more of a blue-green color that I'll use for the dark buds at the top. And as a reminder, this is straight paint on here. I won't use the wet on wet technique, or in other words, paint on water first, until I get to the larger petals. Now, after I've painted the water on this petal, I'll add the ultramarine blue around the edges, letting it blend into the center just a little bit, and then we'll add in some of the darker accent or shadow spots. Now, this first petal, I tried a little mixture of Payne's Gray and Ultramarine Blue for the shadow areas, but that really kind of dulled the color down way more than I liked. So for the second petal, I actually tried using the purple for the shadow color instead, which I liked much better. The color stayed more vibrant, and where the blue and purple started to blend together, the color turned into a lovely blue-violet, which I liked very much. So I'll use that color combination, the Ultramarine blue as the base color with the deoxazine purple as the shadows for the remaining petals. And just as a quick reminder once again, to keep a good value contrast going here, leave a few areas on each petal with little or no color at all. And as far as the colors go, make sure you're not putting down too much of the shadow color. Keep it as an accent to the base color. We don't want it to be too overpowering. All right, I'm getting to a point where I need to let these petals start to dry a little bit before I continue on so they don't bleed into each other. So let's talk color theory just a little bit while we wait. Now, most people are aware of complementary colors being colors opposite each other on the color wheel, and monochromatic is just using one color, usually with different values. But the piece I'm doing today is what's called an analogous piece, which means the colors are used that are right next to each other on the color wheel wheel. This isn't quite as common as the other two I mentioned, but it really can create a stunning and cohesive color scheme. 
Now, as you can see on this color wheel I've got, mainly the three colors that are going on here in my painting are the red violet, violet, and the blue violet. The violet is actually my common denominator here. It's become the accent color for both of the stalks of gladiolas. So when the deoxazine purple and alizarin crimson or the deoxazine purple and ultramarine blue blend together, it creates the lovely red violet and blue violet, which again are adjacent to the violet on the color wheel, creating this lovely cohesive analogous color scheme. It's a fun way to use colors in a painting because it gives you a little more freedom in color choices and the way you choose to use them compared to, say, a complementary color scheme. But it's also still limited enough to really be compatible and hold it all together. For this last open flower, I'm just going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson as well as the blue and the purple. Adding some of this color is just going to tie in the two separate stalks together a little bit more. Okay, great job. We are just about done here. The next step to this painting will be painting in some of the tall grass here at the bottom. I am going to be a little unconventional though, and instead of painting them all green, which you absolutely can do if you prefer, I'm going to tie in some of the blue colors into the grasses today. So this first one, I'm using a mixture of the ultramarine blue and deoxazine purple. I'll paint this one using that same color mixture as before, but I am going to make it a little lighter in value. Now I'll change the flavor of this color a little bit and add some hooker's green into the ultramarine blue for the next few grasses.
Now I'll paint on some pure hooker's green on the bottom part of this second flower stalk. And lastly, to really change things up, let's get crazy and add a touch of gamboge to the hooker's green for a nice yellow green on the top area of this last blade of grass. Then I'll transition to some pure green or even blue green for the bottom. And the very last step and finishing touch today will be to pull out this thin liner brush and paint in a few vein line accents down the center of the petals on these open flowers. I'll paint them using the same colors as the flower, dark enough to be seen, but not so dark that it becomes the focus. We don't want it to look like a spider is crawling out of it or something. And that's it for today's painting of these lovely gladiolus flowers. Thanks for watching today. I hope you had some fun and maybe even learned something new. If you did enjoy this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my channel so I can continue to help you discover your artistic side.